Good morning from Longleaf, Louisiana, home of the Southern Forest Heritage Museum. My name is Everett Luke. Uh, I'm de facto resident, non-resident historian at the museum and uh, superintendent of the Red River and Gulf Railroad that operates at the museum. This morning we have a beautiful morning at Longleaf. Uh, the sun is out. We had a nice rain last night and the weather is beautiful. And so we're going to talk about some of the things at Longleaf and some of the things that you can see when you come here. Uh, this morning we're going to talk about the planer mill and the buildings alongside the planer mill. And the planer mill itself is the oldest single building at Longleaf. It dates from about 1895. It's the only building at Longleaf that survived the 1900 mill fire. So um, in that sense it's unique. It's all built with 12 by 12 or larger uh, longleaf pine main timbers. Uh, it's a huge building and it's the final destination for a lot of the lumber that was milled here at Longleaf. Uh, to, the, to my right, your left, uh, is the uh, shipping clerk's office. It's uh, a candidate for more restoration but it shows what the mill was like before the 1957 renovation when everything at the mill was elevated up on uh, a, I won't say piers, but elevated up uh, above the ground and wood walkways everywhere and uh, whereas today after 1957 it was all filled in and the log pond was filled in so it's a little bit different but the shipping clerk's office does show us over there what everything was like. It was up on, on wood uh, trestle work structures, the whole, all of the complex here at the mill. Uh, the main building behind me has two generations of uh, milling equipment where the smaller pieces of wood would come and be turned into flooring or molding or uh, other decorative woodworks. Uh, there's a couple of milling machines on the right, uh, on my right, your left, that are that date from the earliest part of the mill in 1895. There's a very complex milling machine on the left side, which dates from the 1957 uh, mill renovation, the final renovation here at the mill. Uh, inside, we use the planer mill has a lot of floor space. We use it for our weddings, for gatherings, family reunions, and it's one of the most popular places here at the museum for that reason. That sort of gives you a feel for what is at the planer mill and what it looks like. Now let's go take a tour. This is some of the milling machinery that dates from the early days of the planer mill. Um, at the far side over there is a resaw, which was used for cutting uh, stock to various lengths to use in here. Uh, there's a planing molder that's right here to my immediate left. And this is a woods molding machine, which was built, probably installed in the 1913 uh, renovation. Uh, all of these made different things. They made... Um, like I said, they made moldings for ceiling, chair rail, uh, flooring. Uh, longleaf pine flooring was a very popular item because it's very resistant. It's like, it's almost as hard as oak. So it does a really good job of materials for flooring and finishing. So it was very popular in, uh, at that time. And so these machines were making flooring and such. Uh, it was then loaded on the racks like you see behind me and loaded at the far end. We now have a, a railing to prevent the peop anybody from falling out, but the far end of the building was always open and it was used, uh, they would load boxcars full of um, moldings and flooring and stuff to be shipped. They would, the shipping clerk would take care of it to be a custom order. Uh, such and such a lumber company in such and such a place wanted so many feet of hard of longleaf pine flooring and they would load that in the boxcar each day. The, the uh, planer mill foreman would make sure that everything was available. The mill itself, um, well I want to show you, here's one of the belts. 
and the pulleys that powered all of these machines uh, from down below that will be was powered by the steam engine that we will see in a minute when we go to the the powerhouse. Up above us is a Clara story for both light and ventilation. Uh, this was a very noisy place and it had no artificial lighting. So when the mill worked, you saw just what you see today. It was open, unlighted, and you worked by daylight. The saw filer's room, which was an important part of the mill, of the planer mill, was originally located up where the uh, sawdust vacuum is now. Now it's located in the basement below the building. The building, as I said, all sets up on pier and beam. And uh, the saw filer's room is now below the floor. Saw filer was important because everything had to be kept sharp. At the speed everything worked, you couldn't afford to have dull tools. Uh, dull tools cost money, tore up the wood, you lost wood, you lost production. Also, when you look uh, at the floor here, uh, the floor on the far side, there's a bit of the original flooring right here next to me. The original flooring was two by eight longleaf pine, full two inches by eight inches. None of this one and five eighths by seven and five eighths uh, material. Uh, everything's laid on 12 by 12s or four by 12s for the floor joists. Uh, it's a pretty solid building. If you look inside the building, if you look up at the ceiling, you can see repairs that were made. Uh, some of these repairs were made before the, the museum opened in 1994. Other of re these repairs were made by two of our volunteers. Uh, David Hamilton and the late John Weiss worked in this building extensively uh, at repairing the um, interior framing and structuring and especially repairing the underfloor framing and supports and foundation and then putting in this floor that I'm standing on. This was done by two volunteers, about 90% of that. A lot of the heavy repairs up toward the ceiling were done by a commercial contract crew before the museum ever opened up. Welcome to the powerhouse for the planer mill. Uh, behind me is uh, the Alice Chalmers steam engine, which dates from the 1920 renovation, 1919 renovation of the planer mill because this, uh, the, there's three boilers behind me, one of which is, was new in 1920, the others date from before 1900. And this in, machine was installed, this is a coreless steam engine, it's got a double spoke flywheel. It has a four foot wide leather and canvas belt which powered the planer mill on the other side and the raft of machinery on the other side. As a matter of fact, this is the largest and most powerful uh, stationary steam engine on the property, it was ever the, on the property, and it was necessary to mill the huge volume of timber that came with extending their operations west to Kirthwood in 1919. Um, so that's why all of this was done at that time. Uh, the house was rebuilt. Uh, this is kind of a little bit newer extension because to get the bigger steam engine in here we had to have a lower floor. Behind me is the boilers and on the other side of the boilers is the sawdust house. All of these boilers in here, everything burns sawdust. Nothing was wasted. Wood chips and sawdust no, not wood chips, just sawdust. Fired everything. The sawdust house would be full of sawdust. The doors would be shut. Compressed air would be pumped into the lower part of the sawdust house. The sawdust would be forced up to the top and then come down and feed the boilers behind me, behind the camera. And so that everything burned materials here on the site. Nothing was wasted. Uh, on the floor over here is the water pump that handled all the water coming out of Barber's Creek right behind us here between us and the railroad on, and also on the other side of the railroad. And uh, so we had water coming in here. Everything was 
again, like I said, self-contained. You had water coming in from the creek. Uh, across the railroad is the pump house and the boiler for bringing all the water from the creek that took care of the whole mill. The, everything was supplied with water from this location. And these are the planer mill boilers over here. This is the sawdust house. Uh, there were originally three boilers. I told you there were two, but there were three that powered the first steam engine in here. This larger boiler was added for the extra steam necessary to power uh, the big Corliss. Interestingly enough, all of these boilers have Kroll and Spencer because um, they were built for them. They had specially cast uh, boiler ends that had the name of the mill and the name of the operation on them. And they were built by the Casey and Hedges Company. I think it was in somewhere in Tennessee. Um, so uh, this, is, this is the boiler area. This would be worked by three or four men. Uh, this is the sawdust chute. The sawdust chute would come down and feed into these holes in the side of the boiler. There was another pipe. And this lever opened the sawdust and allowed it to go feed the boiler. So there would be you know, one or two firemen at the boiler and they would maintain the water levels in the boiler uh, and maintain the fuel and keep up steam. Uh, the, the way of maintaining the water levels is up to my shoulder here. This is called a tricock. Uh, there are three of them, so it, it was the idea was to tricock, but also you tried the cocks. And uh, steam locomotives had these for years, boilers had these for years. The idea was that the water was, at the, if the bottom one came out water, and the middle one came out a mixture of water and steam, and the top one came out all steam, you had your water level correct. If you got to the point where the bottom one blew all steam, you had a problem because the crown sheet in the boiler would then be exposed uh, and getting, you know, white hot and red hot from the fire and you had the risk of a boiler explosion. So uh, the tricocks on all these boilers, uh, the water level on all three of these boilers behind me was the same. Here they are on this one, and again, uh, you check the water level, you made sure the water level was right, and you check the fuel supply, you brought down more fuel from the sawdust house to keep up the pressure to run that big engine. And uh, that was necessary. This was probably worked by at least two firemen, maybe three or four at various times, depending on how active the mill was. And there's no lagging on these boilers. The temperatures in here probably were 140 to 100, and, you know, give or take in the summer. This morning, it's fairly cool after the rain. But yesterday, it was 100 degrees. These boilers are probably 400 degrees. So the temperature right out here in the summer for the men working in here was just brutal. And but that was the dawning of the industrial age. This is how industry developed in America. This is, the, you know, we, we hope that you've looked, enjoyed our little tour of, this, of the planer mill um, and its powerhouse. Come back and see us at Longleaf. This is just one thing to see here at Longleaf. This is just the oldest thing we have here at Longleaf. So please come back. Uh, enjoy looking at America's yesteryear in one of the complete, most complete industrial archaeological sites in North America. Thank you.